Coming in hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2023. Welcome to a new edition of Coming in Hot. I'm Brent Wallace alongside Jason York and Bobby Ryan. Boys, we made it to 2023. Huh? It's a good sign. Hey. We're here. Oh, almost. It was a tough one, though. New Year's was a tough yeah, was one. A new, the new, oh, oh, my yeah. buddy had this. My buddy had this automatic, old-fashioned making machine. You just, it, it's like oh, it's yeah. like a Keurig. It's like a Keurig, but it makes old fashions. So you start that around seven o'clock. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you? It's very did interesting. You make it to Bali. Oh yeah. Did you, did you oh, celebrate it's, Newfoundland it's, New Year's? No, oh, no. It's all about for every old fashioned one water and you're good. It's it's all about it's all about balance. Just like just just like this show, boys. It's all about balance. Nobody nobody told uh, me that once enough. upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, you should have been hanging with me, uh, but I would have looked after you. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, no. buddy. <laughs> no. No. Uh, boys, we got big news today. Uh, and so first and foremost. Our show uh, for the uh, next year is being brought to you by Botano.ca, new partnership we're excited to announce today. Uh, Botano, the online leader in uh, sportsbook and casino here in Ontario. They are fully licensed. The game starts now with Botano. Uh, go to Botano.ca, download the app, uh, sign up, take a look, all they have to offer. Uh, they have got so many things on there. You can bet on badminton, uh, all kinds of other sports that are outside the common North American sports. Uh, by the way, Yorkie wanted... Uh, Lock of the day pick. So basically, we got it with Botano coming in. So uh, stay we tuned for that. For this is, yeah, that's right. It's it's all. This is all thanks to Yorkie. Uh, and I, there's a minor crisis at the Wallace household today as we get started for this show. Uh, no, I'm out of printer go, ink. What's, ooh, Wally, come on, you're Mister Organizer. Yeah. So, this shouldn't happen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, but like, like, what do you what do you print? Like, like I just told you about all the. Fact I print that I the had show. To, like, what are you printing? <laughs> like, I can't. I don't know like, if I can. I can't probably even show. This is the paper. There's nothing on it. It's just half lines. <laughs> I can't. <see. laughs> I print it oh, so in man. case anything happens I, to my laptop, I have. I have okay. the show backup. Prepared. You got backup. Yeah. So I like it, Wally. So you. Yeah. He, you're actually sending the nerd report and then reading off the nerd report at the same time. Like, so I, I mean, I'm using, yes. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Yes. Uh, I, listen, oh, Bobby, I, do you I, know I, how to work a printer? No, no. See, <laughs> it's I, I can't even defend myself. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. We got to get to, listen, we're going to yeah. get to the show now. Uh, also, we got a new another new sponsor coming up later in the show, Montana's Barbecue and Bar. Uh, but always, uh, we appreciate the sponsors that have stuck with us throughout, and that is a BEI and of course Renfrew Pro. Uh, go to RenfrewPro.com. They are the industry standard when it comes to pro hockey tape. Uh, they help Bobby score hundreds of goals in the National Hockey League. So RenfrewPro.com. <laughs> Check them out on Instagram as well. They're a great follow. Renfrew Pro uh, and order online from uh, RenfrewPro.com and get your tape order sent directly to your house. Renfrew Pro. The ones with the green core. All right, boys. Uh, we're going to get right to the sense because there's lots going on. Jake Let's Lucchini go. scores his first NHL goal, which is a huge story. Uh, Eric Brandstrom is back in the lineup, so they sent down JBD. But, of course, last night they got the win over Craig Anderson, uh, one-time, long-time teammate who made his first start in Ottawa, and if I'm not mistaken. And um, they got a 3-1 win in Buffalo over Buffalo last night, ended their six-game losing streak. Uh, was there anything, Bobby, that stood out in that game to you for the Ottawa Senators? No, I guess I, I I think it was a it was a good solid win. I I, I think they played well. Um, yeah, no, nothing outside of the fact that you know Jake's first goal. Um, what like you said, yeah. a story in itself. Um, I I saw the stat that you put out because um, I was looking at Christy Domenico was on there for the for the guys that had scored later into their career. Mm -hmm. what, what was his age? Twenty eight. Yep. Is that Something right? Like yeah. Twenty eight. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool story, but I I don't, I don't know. Yorkie, for me, the game wasn't overly. No. It, it wasn't an overly interesting game, but they got it done, and that's all that really matters in the grand scheme of things, right? 
I think so. You know, it was it was a game where the bottom six forwards had a lot to do with that win. I, I thought I thought their penalty kill was really good. They had that key moment in the game yeah. where they had to kill off that extended five on three. Five and you know three. what kind of yeah. stood out? You know what stood out for me, guys? Timmy Stutzler now is killing some penalties, and he was out there yeah. a few mm. times defensively. Um, using his speed to win some races. I, I thought Ottawa won that game with their penalty kill. I was at that particular yeah. time of the game, the, the game was up for debate. And if Detroit scores, it's probably a different outcome in that game, but Ottawa got momentum. So Stutzla for me, number one, defensively getting better. Uh, and I thought Parker Kelly was really good. He yeah. hits every, everything that moves out there. And, I know DJ loves to have his 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 team hard to play against, and I thought that third and fourth line were really physical. And I tell you, Buffalo, they 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 remind me a lot of Edmonton. A couple, of, they just try and outskill you all the time, and I think they're a great matchup yeah. for Ottawa. They don't they don't play hard. They are always trying to make plays, and for Ottawa, I thought they just played real solid. And and yeah, the the third and fourth line were a big part of that win. Hey, it's kind of funny. I mean, uh, you. We're, we're, I'll just finish off on that. Sorry, Wally. Um, funny how many games you come away from thinking Parker Kelly was really good lately. I, hey, uh, yeah. We, you know, mm-hmm. he, he's not a guy that you're going to talk about a ton, but I, I think that he's really, really come into his own lately. Um, and I, I, I like everything about his game. He, I think he just knows what he is and he sticks to it, and that's perfect. Yeah. Well, well his other on the two game, line mates. Last... Yeah. So well, last thing I wanted to end, I noticed, and I always look for key moments of the game. Did you see who was on in the last minute of the game to, to lock down that win? Holden was on the ice. So he, he's yeah. a guy that yeah. every, everybody kind of discards him and says, ah, he's old, he sucks. But here he is, the last minute of the game, he's on the ice locking it down. So the lesser the yeah. lesser lights, Wally, uh, I, I thought Holden in particular had a nice – he didn't notice him. So good game for him. Well, that's – yeah. That's the thing, right? If you if you don't yeah. talk about Nick Holden, you know he had a good game. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Parker Kelly's line mates didn't play a lot in the uh, third period, and that includes Derek Broussard, who played a season low seven twenty one two shifts in the third, along with Austin Watson. Are we seeing perhaps? I don't want to say the end of Derek Broussard in this lineup, but it's it's going to get a lot tougher if we start to see some players work their way back, namely Josh Norris into this lineup. I, I think so. I think he came into the year, uh, obviously on a PTO and there's a, there's a bit of a success story there, but I, I think with Derek, I, I, and, and I think he's very, very accepting of what he was going to be this year. He's a plug and play guy. Um, you need him on your fourth. He can center it. He can wing it. He can do whatever you want, but at times you're going to need some offense out of them and to elevate into different positions. But yeah, I, I just don't, you know, he's 35. I don't, he's not part of the long-term plan, right? He, I think everybody is aware of that. But at the same time, I think that you're going to see him have nights where he plays 14 and 15 minutes down the stretch with injuries too. So that's just, it's just, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. I think he's exactly what they need him to be. And he's understanding yeah. of that. Yeah. Hey, Bobby, how about people have no idea how tough it is to play. I think he played eight and change in that game, just over eight minutes. How difficult it yeah. is to play eight minutes because you're sitting on the bench, you get the wooden legs going, and then you got to go down <laughs> the ice and, and try and accomplish something. The only reason I know this is yeah. my last year in Boston, I was I had a couple games where I played eight minutes. I got on the ice and I felt like the biggest bag of shit out there. You, you, <laughs> just think about just like because when you play when you when you're playing when you're playing every third or fourth shift or for a D, it's every th- every second or third. You're just into the game. So the fact that Brissard played eight minutes and actually was a key factor in that win. I know he didn't mean to make that pass, but he still took it to the net. He Man. still made a good offensive play that ended up turning into Lucini's first goal. So. It's tough, man. Yeah. Hey, Bobby, have you ever, have you ever played games it's, where you don't play a lot? Like you get out there, it's it's tough to do something, right? I'll never forget. Um, it, we call the like as you know when you, when you get down far enough to the bench and you're between the D and the forwards, but the the active forwards that are going out, you're the gro- you're the, call you the you're the grocery the grocery, right? grocery stick. <laughs> Yeah. And you're, you're just like you're sitting. People don't get it, right? You're kind of sitting like this the entire time. Your back tightens right up, and then coach goes, "Hey, go give me a shift." And you go, "Pardon? <laughs> like what? I um, said, Pardon? No. 
<laughs> no, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something, but uh, my, le- my legs are too low, and, uh, and the back just tightens right up. So, uh, And then, it, you know, it's, it's one thing doing it at 20, 20, whatever, but to do it at 35 like brass, uh, oh. you know, it, it, it's not ideal. There's nothing ideal about it. <laughs> Wally, I call it the wooden leg syndrome. You just sit there, and you, and you turn into, like, a, a nice piece of cedar, and you just – it's, it's tough, and you got to go out there. So I like I like what Broussard's doing. Just to finish off our thoughts on him, yeah. like he's he's accomplishing do, something Jim. when he goes on the, when he's going on the ice. He's not really an energy guy, so he's finding a way to contribute, which I think at his age and for all those things we just talked about is it's pretty good. So I like it. So he's yeah. he's still gonna get back. He's still gonna get back in. There's still gonna be injuries. It's not over for him. Uh, he's done a real nice job, I think, for Ottawa this year. All things considering. Yeah, uh, seven twenty-one. He played in yesterday's game. Um, quick question, and I have because it, there's no point just being nice and happy about everything. Is is there a goaltending controversy in Ottawa? Does Anton Forsberg deserve more starts than he's getting? So in the last uh, since November twenty fifth, the last eighteen games, he's played five. He's got a nine twenty eight yeah. save percentage. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Talbot has played I think fourteen games. So I guess that's nineteen. Is uh, and he's, I mean, he's got a 901 or whatever save percentage, but should Anton Forsberg be seeing more of the net as we get uh, down the stretch here? Uh, I'll start with Yorkie being the defenseman. I think he's earned himself uh, some trust because I think it was getting to the point yeah. with Forsberg where, where DJ was starting not to trust him and he was going to Talbot because Talbot was playing so well. So that's, that's a huge win for earning back a little trust. Is he going to get more starts? I think Talbot's still the guy right now, but I think DJ is going to feel better about putting Forsberg back in the net now uh, because of how he played. He played great. Some of the saves he made late in the game were, were outstanding, so mm-hmm. he's not all the way back to, to earning the coach's trust, but, but I think he's halfway back. Yeah, I still think he's – I would agree with Bjorke. I still, I, I still think he's a distant second right now, just, just with the way the net's gone. Um, but that's – the, the trust factor is huge for DJ to say, okay, listen, we're, you know, we got a Wednesday night game. Um, and, and then we have Friday, Saturday, it might be, you know, in that position where you can give him one of those starts to really just kind of lighten the load for Talbot. That's kind of all you want out of that. I think I, 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 I don't know the inner workings of, of what they think. And coaches always would say it's nice to have a one, a and one B, but they don't feel that way. Um, they feel like there's a one and there's a distant second most, most of the time. And I think that's kind of the situation here, but, um, for him to, to make some big saves late in that game was huge. Yeah. So you two as players, uh, and you're like, almost like the coach where you understand there's a one and a two, is it, are you feel more comfortable with Cam Talbot in the net as opposed to Anton Forsberg, Bobby? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, 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 I don't know, Yorkie, you could probably touch on this because I think it's more of a defensive thing, but I, I don't think forwards games change as much knowing who is in that, but I do think defensemen ga- defensive games do. Um, I knew, I knew that when I played with Craig Anderson in the net, you could get away with a lot more just knowing that he was back there. Um, and I think that that changes a mindset as a, as a team for sure. But I, I, you know, you, Hammond's a great example. Um, the Hamburglar was a great example. Our team played a lot tighter with him in that um, at, at the start. And then obviously it's, this is a different kind of run that he was on. But at the same time, we, we tightened a lot of things up with him that, and then, you know, kind of expand it from there. Um, but when you have a guy that you completely trust back there, your, your team is going to go up ice a lot more. Yeah, the biggest the biggest thing for defensemen and goaltenders is, is the communication part of it, because you're doing a lot of handoffs yeah. where... I always loved having a goalie that was could handle the puck and was vocal back there, let you know when a guy's coming on you, talk to you, and, and set the puck up so when the defenseman picks that puck up behind the net, certain goalies just have a little more touch of putting it in that place so you don't and, – and, and I would say when you look at both those goalies, I think Talbot's just a little calmer. He's more experienced. Like, listen, he's had, he's had a little more success, yeah. and he's, he's been an all-star. So for sure, for sure the D are going to feel a little more relaxed, but – I don't know as far as the communication goes because I'd love to be ice level for a few games because then you can see, then, then you could tell everything. Watching from up top, it's really tough to get a handle on, on that relationship between the D and the goaltender. But Talbot just yeah. seems calmer. He seems calmer and it's experience. But I, 
I would say that it's not that they don't they don't trust uh, both goaltenders. It's just it's experience. It's it's the same thing with any position. Talbot's a more experienced guy, so of course the team's going to feel a little bit more comfortable, especially the demon. For sure. Uh, all right. Uh, by the way, um, I think we briefly touched on Jake Lucini's goal. Uh, he's that. By the way, I just need to get through all these sponsors, so I apologize. Bei, uh, <laughs> who's been with me since day one. Uh, go to BonisherExcavating.com. They are the industry standard when it comes to uh, construction in the Ottawa Valley. Uh, BEI, they're helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. Please slow down in construction zones when you're out there. And, of course, uh, during, I guess, the winter seasons, but it seems to be pretty good in the weather right now. There's not a lot of stuff on the road the way the weather is lately. I love it. It feels like we're in Nashville. The weather's so nice here. Hey, we were minus one Is it warmed up yet, Bobby? It's 65 oh. today, so I don't know. Yeah, it's nice. We got some rain coming in, some overcast, but we had that deep freeze. Every, every rink in the city is pretty much shut down, hey? And the, the city just cannot handle the cold. Every Like all the rink's nah, chillers really? are, are pipe. No, this yeah. place is not meant for it. Um, you would know. I mean, Yorkie, uh, the Franklin rink was down, and then two other runs were down too. Um, we're just not not built for this. No, it's, it's crazy in Nashville. When I was there... They, they had a state of emergency when it snowed when I was playing there. They shut the city down, and, and it was it was a light dusting because no nobody's got snow tires. They're just not used to that kind of stuff. But how about here, Wally? I was so proud of my driveway. I was right down to the pavement. All my neighbors had snow everywhere. Now they've all caught up to me, man. It's uh, it's not fair. I Same. All that work. The last, Same. I'm all actually that work for, I'm pissed about it. Yes. So am I. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Out I was driving guy. like there was a clear in the water. Oh, I, it was oh, perfect. I, and all of a sudden, everybody diligent. just, as I said to my kid, we could have just left it. And here's me <laughs> not being surprised that you're, that you are the anal retentive driveway guy. Just everything's perfect. <laughs> yeah. You probably got a special <laughs> shovel, right? It's perfect scraper. Do you have, do you have the, do you have the thing Wally too, to break up the ice at the end? The little uh, ice? thing there. Come on, oh, son. Absolutely. We got to get the ice break it up that, that's that is a i will be leaving that to my son because that is a must-have for driveway clearing <laughs> i i i got a feeling too that you're I, you're right up to a certain crack on the sidewalk and then you're like that's the neighbor's responsibility right i just spray painted it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, good. that's good i I will, so I'll admit to now, if I, if I haven't told you this, so I was traveling a lot uh, back in the TSN days for my wife's 40th birthday. I bought her a snowblower. You bought her a Just, snowblower yeah. for Christmas? Yeah. For Christmas? For her, well, for her, birth, birthday. her birthday is December 29th. So yeah, for her 40th, yeah. she got a snowblower. Yeah. She loves it. It's got heated. Okay. You're just the gift that keeps on giving. Eh? You're just the gift that keeps on giving, Wally. <laughs> were you guys in single? Were you guys in single? Were you guys in single beds for the next month? <laughs> no, I was. I was actually in Ufa, Russia, so I was good. I was gone for a month. <laughs> I, <laughs> I got out of town quickly. Um, okay, Jake Lucchini, because we, as we continue to to mess this show up. Um, as players, you know what it's like to to fight your way to the NHL. And I understand, Bobby, you're a, you're a second overall pick, so you didn't do the grind that Jake Lucchini did. But you can appreciate what he's gone through. At 27, makes his NHL debut, and then he finally gets his first goal. This is a great story, and I can't imagine that players uh, – or I guess I can imagine how excited players were for him to get that goal last night. 100%. I think – you know, for me, I saw a lot of guys come in over the years that were, you know, that were, I guess, the, they're grinders in a sense that they've 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 rode the bus for a long period of time and they get their chance and they get their opportunity. And those are guys that you root for and those are the guys that the room really wants to talk about and, and, and kind of celebrate. So uh, I'm pretty sure they made it a memorable night for him. I'm sure there was, a, uh, you know, some special words for him and things like that. Uh, but, yeah, those, those guys – and it's kind of funny because those guys are generally glue guys that you just don't know about. Right. Yorkie. Those are the guys that come up and you're like, okay, if you've played this long in the minor leagues, you're doing something right. Um, because the minor leagues I think are harder. It's kind of a touch and go place for high end picks to, to come and leave. But, um, for a guy that's, you know, kind of cut his teeth there for a long period of time, uh, it's very, very rewarding and your room likes to be part of it. Yeah. The, uh, it's, it's so different now. Cause I, I started off in the AHL 
because uh, I got drafted by Detroit and they were freaking stacked. So I was down there for three years. But but the Myers used to be a place where there was a lot of guys in their late twenties and thirties, and those guys played all the time. But it's changed now. So if, to Bobby's point, if if you're twenty seven years old and you're putting up numbers in the American Hockey League, you, you're a good player. It's just you're not getting yeah. an opportunity because those opportunities always go to the draft picks and. No team wants to look stupid and keep a, a high pick in the minors for, for a long time. So I think it's a great story. Yeah. And you could genuinely see the looks on the bench of, for the guys in the Ottawa Senators. Those guys were fired yeah. up. It's, it's, so, it's special, but to me at 27, yeah. it's, it's so rare to happen, especially now, guys. So, yeah, big smile. Yeah. You know, loved it. Me and, my, me and my wife were watching it, and women always pick up on stuff. She's like, look at that smile. And she wasn't even watching the game. But she zoned in on the smile because it was, what do they call it? A human, uh, human element type story, right? And uh, it was great for sure. Yep. So, I, yeah, real nice, real nice. He uh, reminds me of Matt Karkner, uh, Yorkie, because you remember yeah. Matt, who you know fought yeah. so long and, and literally story. fought so long in the AHL. Yeah, who made it and, and ended up getting paid uh, to play in Long Island. So good for him. Um, I, but I, aside from all the the nice stuff, I really like his game. Like. I really like the way he's played. And I, for me, would have a tough time taking him out of the lineup. I understand you've got Matthew Joseph coming back and Tyler Mott at some point. And, but does he have a spot here in this lineup, or is he just going to have to go back because there's no room? Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, I think to your point, the guys that are coming back are one-way guys. They're guys that you know that are going to yeah. be in your lineup every night. So it kind of puts – and again um, – as good as the story is, I don't think that he's part of the long-term plan, right? Um, is Matthew Joseph? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, is Tyler Mott? Maybe, I don't know. But at the same time, those are the guys that you've paid um, to be there and they're going to be there. So um, yeah. again, and that's the, that's the downside of this stuff. Yorkie is like, you've been there where these guys come in, they do OL, they, they play a certain role and then, but they're, they're cup of coffee guys. And I don't, I don't know if that changes with a guy like Lucini. I just, I kind of think he might be a, um, you know, a 10 to 15 game guy this year. And then and that might be it for him. Who, right. That just, that's just the way yeah. that thing rolls. I hate to say that because he's, he has been good actually. Yeah, no, he's. I I like him. I notice him every time he's on yeah. the ice. You know, you know what I know, yes. notice about him? He's not. A, he's not afraid to hold on to the puck. He'll take the puck up high in the offensive zone, and I'm like, look at this guy. He's got a little patience. He's drawing guys to him. He's hitting everything that moves. The one thing I will say that's going to get interesting. And I know we're going to talk about it later this this week, Wally and Bobby, is. Ottawa's cap situation is going to get really interesting, especially when with DeBrinket coming yeah. up. So anytime you can get a guy and pay him league minimum and he's actually doing a pretty good job for you, it, it, it's, it, it makes your life a lot easier. So his, the only thing is his age. It's 27. Are you going to, are you going to, yeah. are you going to invest in a guy that age? But all he, all he can do is live for today. And man, he's making a case for himself right now. And DJ is the type of guy, Bobby, you played for him a bit. Yeah. He's not a, he's not afraid to reward guys like that and go against the grain. You know, so many coaches are like, well, I can't play this guy because he's not one of the GM guys. So got to play these guys where DJ, like he threw him on the power play there. He doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, that's what I, I kind of like that. Cause you know, as well as I do, there's certain coaches that never go against the grain and that gets the respect of the guys in the room too. When, Hey, he threw him out for a little sniff on the peeper. Maybe if I'm playing well down the road, I'll get that opportunity too. So it goes a long yeah, way in your room. It, it really does. No, you're, you're not wrong. I, I actually, I noticed that about him the other night too. And then I was like, well, he's a 27 year old rookie. He's got nothing to lose. So yeah. cycle that yeah. thing. High. Exactly. <laughs> hey, worst thing that could happen. I'm going back to the A. Yeah. Do your thing, buddy. Just go for it. <laughs> Have fun out there. <laughs> Uh, congrats to Jake Lucini, by the way. And I, listen, I hope he sticks in the lineup, but I know that's obviously tough, uh, Hall to point out. Yeah. Um, we bring this up all the time, but this is Sens win a couple of games, but like, Hey, maybe there's going to be a push for a playoff spot. By the way, <laughs> Ottawa in the last 18 games is eighth in the league in goals against average. So we've seen a huge, I'll say it. We've seen a shift, obviously defensively. Wow. Um, they were 28th up until November 23rd. And now they're eighth, uh, since November 23rd. Um, 
But on November 23rd, they were 6-2-1, and one, and they were last in the East, and they were 10 points out of a playoff spot. Since then, they've gone 11-5-2. and two. They're still 10 points out of a playoff spot. And as we keep trying to say, it gets tougher because there's just all the teams in front are playing so well, or they're just getting enough points, the same as Ottawa. It's a it, – they'd have to go on a miraculous run at this point to try and get into a playoff spot. Yeah, I don't – yeah. It, it's, it's crazy that their stats have changed that much and they have made zero ground up, um, right, because yeah. everybody else is winning. And then they've dropped games that you just can't drop too, the Detroit one and some other games. Like those are must-haves at this point for them. Um, it's in, in, you know, in, in, I'm trying to look this up, excuse me, as we're talking about it, but the teams that are just above them are the teams that you cannot lose to, and they've, they've found ways to do that, uh, unfortunately. But, right. I, yeah, I just – I, I mean, call me crazy, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wait this out till the end of January before I really start to and and then you can have a really clear picture. But I think if they have a run here, like there, there, there's an opportunity here for them to to really get into this this fight. And I I kind of I just want to see it, right? I just want to be there for it and watch it. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same, Wally. Realistically, mathematically, do they have a chance? The odds say no. Um, I remember I was on that 90, what was it, 96, 97 team. We were further out. But the difference was there were no three-point games back then. And the three-point games yeah. were the ones that kill you because you, you got all those teams between you and that wild card spot, and they get a little loser point here, a loser point there. Those are the ones that bite you in the ass. So I want to see. The, 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 only, the good thing about this is we're now – what did this team want coming into the season? I know the GM, Dorian, we want to play meaningful games. So that's what they get. They're, they're playing meaningful games yeah. right now. The longer they can keep doing that, the better it's going to be for guys like Stutzla, for guys like uh, like everybody on that team, Brady Kachuk, Batherson. And instead of playing games in February and March where you know you're not going to make it, it's like, man, if we win this game, we have a chance. So you're getting that different kind of pressure that you need to get better, that you need to push it to the next level. So that's all I want to see from this team. Play games when it matters, and then you can really yeah. judge what you have versus we're out of the playoffs. Oh, this guy is lighting it up now that they're out of the playoffs. Well, those aren't the yeah. guys you want on your team. You want guys on your team that, that do the good things when there's some heat on the line. Yeah, I would agree on this. I, I think that they're going to really have a good understanding of who – is going to be in the picture long term after this season um because when you look at the cap situation there is going to be a guy that's got to be out when you look at all the guys that they've paid um and and you're going to get a pretty good accurate depiction of who that player is going to be by the end of this year i would say yeah 100 uh, percent. uh by the way and i brought this up before thomas shabbat seven years in the league and uh hasn't really played a lot of meaningful hockey in his lifetime yeah. or in his career yeah. so yeah. uh these guys need to find a way to play some some games that matter. Uh, Tim Stutzler, you brought it up earlier about him killing penalties out on the five on three. Uh, two goals last night. Uh, he had one goal in his first nine games. He's now 13 in his last 24 games, by the way. Leads the Sens in goals since November the 3rd. Um, he has seven multi-goal games, and he's only 20. Uh Martin Havlat is the leading senator with eight multi-goal games before his 24th birthday. 21st birthday. Stutzla will turn 21 on January the 15th. Five more games to go. Can he get one more two-goal game in that time span, which includes Columbus tomorrow, uh, to hopefully tie or break Marty Havlat's record? Bobby. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that I mean, he can go off for two at any night, like the way he plays, the way he's, I mean, he's that good. Um, and you, and you forget sometimes you're talking about a 20 year old, right? Uh, yeah. But he is a very special player that can, I, I actually gained a ton of appreciation for him when I got to watch him live and watch the way he um, finds ice and does different things that, that the senators don't have that dynamic with a lot of guys, you know, there's him and then probably bath and, and um, that's about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, he could he could have four tomorrow, right? <laughs> like he doesn't need much time or or many opportunities. He's just, uh, you know, he's that he is that dynamic of a player. Yeah, I've he's his 
He's the guy that I think is really going to – he'll probably benefit the most from this little stretch of games they're going to play because he's 20 years old and he's like a sponge. He's like a sponge right now. He's just absorbing information. He's figuring out how to play the center ice position in the NHL. He's figuring out how to be better defensively. And his talent – like I'm with you, Bobby. When I watch him skate each and every night, he's probably the most dynamic player on the ice for both teams. He just – he's got that ability that – I remember when I used to carry the puck up the ice – you give a guy like that the puck, and it's called an auto zone entry. He's getting it, and he's getting it in the zone, and he's and he's making guys around him better. Um, and I said this, I said this the other day. If I'm a defenseman and Stutzla's coming coming down on me, I'm worried about is he going to cut across the blue line? Is he going to take me wide? Uh, it, so I end up backing in, and I give him all kinds of time and space because you got to respect. He's got so many different tools. And that's what I love about watching him. Yeah, he still has issues defensively. He's going to learn all that stuff. But, man, he <laughs> it's a... he, he, he – that draft, Bobby, if, if we had to do a redraft, Wally and Bobby, he is the absolute no-brainer. If you probably pulled 99% of the GMs, he's going first overall. He's that good. Yeah. He's yeah, that good. Right I would now. agree. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of defensemen out there making business decisions right now, going just just giving them time and space. Eh? Hey, right, okay. right. I, I am ha, hand up, back in, yeah. put him to the outside. <laughs> yeah, That's so good, so good. Uh, I love it. Would okay, Yorkie, would you take Tim Stutzla or Jake Sanderson first overall? I'm taking Stutzla. I just think at the center ice yeah. position, uh, he's 20 years old. And as much as I like Jake Sanderson, uh, I j- Stutzla's a world cal- he's a world class player. That's what he is. He's twenty friggin' years old, and we're t- and he's already doing what he's doing. So uh, time will tell. Uh, Sanderson looks trending to be an outstanding two way defenseman, but uh, yeah. as much as I'm a I'm the president of the Right Shot Defenseman Club, I know Sanders a, a left handed. Um, the center ice position is so important in the National Hockey League. You look at teams that genuinely win the Stanley Cup, it's depth down the middle. They have that They have that yeah. superstar center iceman, and the Senators have a chance to, to for, for Timmy to be that guy. So I'm going Stutzel. You know, when you look at that draft, we they were three and five, I think. Was Sanderson five Is that or six? Correct. He went right five. Bo- five, yeah. 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 Right, right, bo- yeah mean, right of five, you, yeah. You, you could you could probably do that draft right now and and start to look at maybe Sanderson being two or three um, already, yeah. right? So like you might come out of that draft with the two best players. Um, I I still think that it's early for Quentin Byfield. I know that people are on him about it, and and you know topic for another mm-hmm. day. But that's a that's a big center iceman in the Western Conference that I think will be a very very good player. But that position as that type of player takes longer. So I I think the judge has yeah. been a little quick on him. Yep. And also too with totally Byfield agree. guys, like he, like Wally Byfield's coming into a situation where Stutzla is getting an opportunity because with Norris's injury, it's accelerated looks for him. Where a guy like Byfield, he's got they brought in Philip Philip Dino. Um, they've already got their their yeah. number one center. I can't believe him for the big Slovakian guy. Um, how am I forgetting his name? Kopi right Anzi Kopitar. Anzi- Kopitar. Anzi- I know he's not from uh, Slovenia. Um, like, so when you Slovenian. come into a situation like that, and Bobby, you know, you know better than I do. As a young player, you you come in and you don't get the looks right away. It's Sitzla's learning; he's learning on the job right now. But the impressive thing for me is he's learning on the job and actually doing a lot of really good things. So yeah. I'm with you. I watch Excellent. I watch Byfield and I watch Byfield a lot in junior guys. He's still a big horse that's going to find his way in the league. So let's. I, I, I let's let's yeah. see how he's going to turn out. I, I think there's a lot there, for sure. Uh, Bobby, you played with Lucas Raymond a little bit, did you not? Um, yeah, through training camp uh, last year. Yeah, I, I'm a really big fan of his his game too. Um, very very uh, cerebral player. Um, kind of slow thing. Slow, excuse me, slows things down to his speed. Um, but can attack you in a lot of different ways. I, a really good player. Um, and, and kind of, you know, I don't want to say a tier below what Tim Stutzla is right now, because I think Lucas has had his own success and are different types of players, but yeah, uh, Lucas can play. Uh, and so here's a tough question for you, but is Detroit ahead of Ottawa 
in the rebuild or are they roughly the same? I think they're roughly the same, but I think that, I think that Steve Iserman um, had a different game plan in mind when you look at the rebuild, like he signed some older players this year, right? Which Ottawa has yeah. done and kind of got away from, but I think he signed some players this year that made them way more competitive right now. And they're only what a couple of points ahead of, yeah. I mean, they got a couple of games in hand and they're, and they're, you know, two points ahead of Ottawa. Um, I think their goals are different. I think that they're not trying to build for five years down the road as much as Ottawa is right now, because that's that's not the focus for Detroit. I think it's just getting back into that playoff spot right now. Because there, you know, you have a captain there that's twenty seven or whatever Dylan is, um, and it and, and it's you know, how long do you want to go without making the playoffs when you got him and Bertuzzi and Fabry to a sense, and you know some other guys there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo Sider, obviously very there. good on the blue line. Seems yeah. like there's less pressure there, less less pressure there to like. Let's be honest. Your ownership's a lot more stable in Detroit. We don't even know who the new yeah. owners are, are going to be here yet. So for yeah. for the staff here and the general manager, they need they want to win. Where if Detroit loses, obviously they do want to win. But there's there's a little more leeway there, I guess I'll say, because uh, it's a total different yeah. scenario. It's been the same ownership group forever. But as far as Bobby, I'm with well, you. As far as where they are, where they are, they're pretty equal as far as where they are in the development thing. Yeah, that's fair. But yeah. Detroit gets trust, right? Detroit has all the trust that ownership management is going to do the right thing and they're going to have the right pieces in place. It's not the same here because you didn't get that sense from ownership down to management that they knew what was going to happen or going to you know, transpire on the ice, right? You know, well, that's we, so we can do. That's a, why Detroit. Well, we can do a, a whole show on this, but there was about a year and a half there where you had no clue what was going on <laughs> any day, right? Yes. Just like, what, <laughs> what shoe is going to drop today? <laughs> you know, so there um, was, uh, that's not the case. A, a three season uh, run where Ottawa used the most players in the league. And it was like over a hundred or right around 98. Like it was a constant revolving door of players just coming in and out, just trying to, you just felt like they were just placeholders and they, uh, there was just no direction. Dude, like, it was a disaster. You, do you remember Cedric Paquette? <laughs> like, <laughs> Derek no, Stepan, Cedric no. Paquette. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. Tell me how you really <laughs> feel, Bobby. No, I don't. I, just, dude, it was, like, dude, I remember Boro came in one day right after the deadline when Guy had just gotten fired. We had like four trades happen at the deadline. Everybody and Bora was like, "Hey, like, I think we should probably just address the team." And I remember talking to the team, and you got young guys in the room. And I go, "Hey, guys, you're never going to see this again in the NHL. This is this is an absolute tire fire dumpster. Let's just get through this." And then we lost seven to one that night to Washington. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a mess. It was such a mess. <laughs> you're just trying to like tell the guys that you know it's going to get better. Let's get through you know this awkwardness and it and, and it ultimately will but there was like i knew i was lying to them while we were talking to them and boros looking across the room at me and we're doing the same thing and i'm like we're just we're just making shit up man <laughs> this is tough this is this is tough <laughs> yeah. you know uh, so you're saying you're not tony robbins the great motivator no 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 it wasn't a great speech because obviously i was i think i was a minus three that night and we lost seven to one <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, like we should we should sit down and do this at some point because I want to ask. I don't know if I've ever asked another player about when Mark Borowiecki had to do the interview with Eugene Melnick and what the Ooh, nonsense yeah. was, was surrounding great. that. <laughs> so yeah. Dude, he just got uh, I'm gonna Yorkie, say Yorkie, you you've been in a locker room for a long time. Could you imagine the assault that he got from the guys on that? <laughs> it was oh, so boy. bad. <laughs> he, I remember like, that. He too. wanted yeah. he wanted nothing to do with it. They just grabbed him one day when he was walking out of the rink, and he just got yeah. I was like, thank God, I I, I always walked out the back way, Wally, because I never wanted to cross paths with the media after I had already done it. So I always went the long way, and poor Boro just got caught up in it. <laughs> We, uh, I, which is funny because I knew if I always had to talk to you, I had to go meet you at the loading dock because you'd always be going out the other door. Um, yep. Is uh, <laughs> yep. for Boro. I remember seeing Boro one day at Senseplex in the summer. I think it was. I was like, like what happened? And he's like, the guy signs my paycheck. Like what am I gonna do? And that Nothing. and that yeah. was the problem with Boro. 
he was so nice about everything. He's like, yeah, okay. But he wanted no, I, I felt bad because he wanted no part of that. And then they said, well, he's a Senator for life. And then they, they wanted, then they traded him uh, or then they let him go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, because he wanted like, because he wanted one. Yeah, he wanted two million bucks. Just pay the guy two million bucks. Yeah. He's worth every penny. But yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Like I, Anthony, I, I, Anthony I remember Duclair, uh, you know, you know, a couple guys. I borrow. We mentioned you mentioned the name glue guy earlier, Bobby. Like that's a guy. He's yeah. just that guy will do anything for the team. He'll fight whoever. He'll block a shot with his face. He'll play hurt. He'll interview the owner. <laughs> Whatever you want, this guy will do. Um, such such a good such a such a good human such a good human being too. Like and a local guy too. And a local guy that didn't want a lot of yeah. money. And it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Like when you think about your story there, Bobby, of the dumpster fire Ottawa was, all the stuff that went on, and somehow they've been able to draft well, and the team now is in a position where it could take the next step because it's got a lot of good pieces where you look at other teams, they're a dumpster fire and the fire just continues and they never get better where I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be really exciting here once new ownership comes in with all the little building blocks and pieces there are. Um, so it's, it's amazing though, because a lot of teams never recover from stuff like that, but Ottawa has been able to amazingly somehow uh, put together a good little uh, system of, uh, yeah. of, of depth. Yep. Well, credit Trent, sure. man, I, obviously. Yeah. yeah, that's. I was gonna say he might be the only guy that they don't clean. House. Like, if you're, if I'm, if I'm a new owner, I'm cleaning house. I think that's just kind of the way things go a lot of times. But um, yeah. that guy is getting a, that guy's getting a raise and and you know staying exactly where he is because he's done a remarkable job with the players that he's brought in. I went on a I went on a Zoom call. Uh, it was a coach's clinic. Uh, I had to do this high performance coaching clinic, and I must, it was a Trent or Troy that came on, and he came on for an hour and he spoke to all the coaches. I was so impressed with how organized, how in depth, and this guy leaves no stone unturned. I'm like, all right, this is why this team keeps developing all these prospects because they got the yeah. Man Brothers who are. They're just yeah. diligent workers. And I came away from that uh, Zoom call. I'm like, wow. I learned a few things listening to how he deals with players' development. Um, uh, very impressive. Yeah. Bobby, did you did you go to Belleville at all? And were you with Troy? You did, didn't you, at some point? No. No, I've never. I, out, okay. I went down there. Um, I went down there for a couple of skates, but that was, yeah, that was it. Yeah. That was, that, okay. Nothing. It was just the skates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, because yeah. Troy Mann is extremely you ex, you describe Troy Mann to a T there, Yorkie, extremely organized. That's why I respect yeah. him so much. We're both OCDs. Uh, is he's he's very good. Like you can tell the players love playing for him, regardless of what the records are. And because right now their their lineup is decimated with guys injured and up here, but uh, they've done extremely good. I, I I don't know. Like I'd like to see Troy get a shot in the NHL. I don't know where that's going to come from. I don't know if it's going to be Ottawa, but they. He he deserves that at least that head coaching spot at some point here. Uh, all right, I moving yeah, on to I, I one of our favorite topics. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, maybe, I think it'll be with Ottawa. I, yeah. I, I do. I, yeah. Okay, and, and that's not to discredit right, DJ, so, but again, new, new owner is going to look into that for sure. Okay, so I'm going to veer off the, the the script now. Uh, God, this bothers me. Ooh. Is uh. Is <laughs> Ottawa has has gone and brought in lots of coaches without experience, if you will, like DJ. Um, I won't say Guy's less experienced, but he was out. He was coaching in Europe. Uh, Corey Cluston, if we go back far enough, Paul McLean. I know he did win Coach of the Year, but can Ottawa sustain another rookie NHL head coach? Do they not need to bring in someone? Uh, with a pedigree or track record of turning things around. Uh, Claude Julian, obviously, I'll use that name. Um, Yorkie, I'm going to start with you. So when you're asking when new ownership comes in, do they need a new coach with experience? Yeah, I, as opposed I, to a, been a, lot a rookie, of, unproven head coach. Yeah, a lot of coaches have been recycled here the last, whatever, five, ten years in the NHL. It's... It's going to depend. I don't think you necessarily need a guy that's been around forever. Well, here's a great example. Look at the Philadelphia Flyers. They brought Torts back again. Um, they're not winning. It's it's not always guaranteed when you bring a guy in. I know in Vegas, Cassie's doing a great job there. Uh, I, I love the Jimmy Montgomery signing in Boston. He, they gave him another yeah. opportunity. 
maybe something like that where a guy has had a little run for a little bit and for some reason it didn't work out. Um, but also to everybody always talks about the head coach, how important he is. You got to make sure you bring in the right people to surround him because nowadays in yeah. the NHL, it's, it's never been more important to have really good assistant coaches. To me, those are the yeah. guys that really run the team. The head coach, yeah. he's just managing personalities, conflict. It's, it's really important, but you re- need really smart guys, and you also need a guy on your staff that can relate with the players. You need a guy that can talk to your players, and you can have a conversation with them, and you know it only goes as far as him. You can trust him, yeah. but he's not going to run back to he's not going to run back to the head coach and rat you out. Uh, that's really important. I look at that Boston Bruins staff, guys, and as much as I like Jim Montgomery, they've got Chris Kelly, who is exactly that guy. He's super smart. They've got uh, and they've got John Gruden and Joe Sackle. They're a big reason why that team's doing what they're doing because they've got all different types of players. And you don't have to be a player. I'm, I'm not saying that, but you need guys that have those different skill sets. So head coach important. But to me, it's even more vital you bring in the right assistant coaches. Yeah, I, I would agree with everything you said, um, especially the assistant coaches part, because that's such a big thing. You need, to, you need to know that you can talk to the assistant coach to get the information across that isn't going directly to the coach in a different manner. That's, that's a, a very big thing. But to answer the original question, my, my answer would be yes. I think they need a coach with some experience, um, you know, like a Barry Trotz um, type thing. And you yeah. can, I, I think, you know, Torts in Philly is a different thing. I think he went in to establish a culture and I think he knew that this year was yeah. going to be a wash, but you're starting to establish something and you're starting to put some roots down um, for your team and, and longevity wise. Don't think you need to do that in Ottawa because the room's not a problem for, by all, you know, by everything that I understand is the room is great. And that's a, you know, you got great leaders and great people in there, but you do need a coach that I think is going to be a little a, a little harder because DJ's grown up with these guys at a certain point, the voice needs to change um, to, to get to that next level. So I do think that a, yeah. a coach that is going to come in is going to have more experience. Yeah. Maybe yeah, and, they and need the have... New York Islanders. They need the New York Islanders of the nineties when they had like nine assistant coaches. Remember that? <laughs> it was like a football organization. I think it was Mike Milbury was the head coach. <laughs> do you know what? So I have, uh, I went in to watch, uh, I don't know if I told this story before, I, I went in to watch, a, I was doing a Toronto game, uh, for, and uh, I was watching the pregame skate, and on their pregame skate, they had three skating coaches on the ice, filming guys with iPads, they had two skills coaches, six assistant coaches, it was crazy, like the amount of cash they're spending on coaching there in Toronto, and uh, I think that was the year they lost in the first round too, and I'm like, wow, huge budget, yes. and again... It's, it doesn't more, 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 more doesn't always mean better. It's quality. And, and no, and video doesn't video is fucking useless. Part of my language, but I cannot, I think video has just absolutely killed our game. I really do stop with the iPads and you know, the story for another day and time, but my God, man, enough. <laughs> just show me what the other team does in a two minute video clip on the power play, the PK in the, in the middle of the ice. And we're good. That's all I want to see. Uh, this will be a three-hour show, thanks to Bobby today. Uh, Sorry, guys. Here, here, Wally, here's the, here's the truth. Here, here, if you did a test, and a lot of we used to time some of the coaches on how long their video presentations. We'd put the timer on. Coach would come in, and we're like, "Okay, new record, twenty-six minutes of video." After the first three minutes, guys zone out. Like you're you're thinking about the game, what you're gonna do, and all of a sudden, it's it's overkill but the problem is all Man. coaches now if if you lose well you didn't do enough prep so it's on you everyone's so afraid of losing their job that they do overkill so uh, i i what was, so your, what was your you time just, limit bobby what was your what was your time limit five on minutes five minutes and then i'm on a putting green i'm on a putting green in bermuda <laughs> i said i'm out i got done it. <laughs> Yorkie, I, I don't I don't know if you know this story or not, uh, and I I haven't uh, verified it. But if I'm not so back in, uh, I'll say the '90s, maybe early 2000s. But there was a power play meeting or a PK meeting. So Radic Bonk is on the team. That's I do remember this. And yeah. they go into the meeting, and I forget who the assistant coach is, 
and the whole meeting is surround is centered around this one guy. We'll say it's Alex Ovechkin, but it's not. But surround yeah. this one guy. They're all the, that's the focus of the meeting. And Radic Bonk goes, "Yeah, uh, he was traded two weeks ago." And then the, the, the <laughs> coach goes, "That's it. Me- meeting's over." Meeting's over. I forget oh who. I don't know if it's Ron Lowe, I, but I don't remember. Uh, if you were there for Ron Lowe, or if, I, I didn't have, I, I didn't, I didn't right. have him. Uh, I, I, the, our, the guy, great. the guy, the guy we had was uh, one of my favorite coaches, by the way, of all time, Perry Pern. Uh, but Perry, oh, yeah. he he could go deep, man. He could go 25, 30 minutes, and we that's the guy we'd yeah. get the timer on all the time because he hockey Canada guy, right? So everything was about video 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 but uh yeah he's perry's got the record to this date but love perry what a great guy still keep in touch with him great coach too yeah That's awesome um okay we're way behind schedule so let me get off to our uh, get on to our new topic uh what everybody likes to talk about is alex to uh brought to you by new sponsor alert montana's barbecue and bar um listen basically we've been home for two years during the pandemic but they're now trying to uh bring you guys out uh, and have a little bit of partying. So they're bringing back the viewing party. Uh, come out to Montana's where the game is always on, and there are daily deals to keep you full. Today, by the way, Monday, half-price wings. Um, go to montanas.ca. There's 51 locations in Ontario. They're all across Canada, but there's a ton of locations for you to find. Um, each day, they've got something different going on. Uh, Montana's, we're happy to have you on board. Uh, also, you can... Uh, order online you can also uh, check out the menu online uh lots of good things but i will say i've petitioned montana's to only cook their steaks one way i think there's only one way to cook them uh that's well done so i'll let you know if that how that transpires well done well what do you, like, yeah, well, what do you mean what, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah uh, i wanted to see your reaction yeah. yeah, this show is so far off the rails ah oh, not a chance <laughs> i'm like I, I don't get it man like I want it so rare that if it had penicillin, it would have lived. Like I, I just like that's it. <laughs> I don't. Uh, well done. Are we? What, hey, I'm a. I, I should. I, I'm a big Montana's fan. Big, great wings. Great, great, great wings. wings. So, um, oh, God. I'm happy. I just saw those yeah, wings. Happy there. Oh, stop showing yeah. me those wings. It's New Year's. I'm trying to get, lose some weight. <laughs> that's it. Oh, I know. Oh. Uh, yeah. So good. So it's funny you say that. Um. In back in 1997, 98, I'm covering the Montreal. My very first ever playoff series is Montreal versus Buffalo round two. And we're in Buffalo. So it's my very first ever trip to an NHL city is Buffalo. Eh. Anyway, we're at, uh, is it Mr. Green Beans or Mr. I think it's Mr. Green Beans is this, like it was a steakhouse there for a long time. Something like that. So we go yeah, out, so there's a bunch cool. of media people. Michael Whalen, the longtime TSN reporter for Montreal. I'm, I'm there and, so I order my steak and I was like, I'd like to have a whatever filet. Well done. Michael in the middle of my order goes, no, you're not. And I was like, yeah. no, no, I, I want it. I, he's like, no, you can have medium at best. I'm like, I would like to order my steak. Well done. And he wouldn't let me. So I went, I'm going to take the chicken. <laughs> I had chicken. That's it. So like, I got to, I mean, do you still eat steaks? Well done. <laughs> Cause you're, you're, you're North of 40. <laughs> like, you can't not be eating a well done steak. <laughs> I'm close to 50 is you no, know, it's medium. Well, it, but if you, if it, wow. if it doesn't have any pink, I'm okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm uh-huh. medium, you nice pink center. Well done though. No, come on. You, you gotta, you can't cut it. Wally, what are you doing? You need a chainsaw. My, my, to get it's a brick. <laughs> my wife won't let me barbecue. <laughs> He's just ruining. I wouldn't. Family. I don't blame her. Yeah, I don't. I don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't have char on it, did you really barbecue it? No. Wow. Oh, All right. Uh, remind me. Remind me not to come over <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like the perfect time to tell everybody we'd like you to like and subscribe to our show. Um, okay, Alex to bring it. <laughs> I, I need to move on. Is um. In his first 19 games, had five goals, 15 points. In his last 18, eight goals, 21 points, uh, and a 1.17 goals per game average. Uh, he's turned it around, but the power play points are where he's getting it done, and that's 19 points in the power play this season. 
leads the team in power play points. Um, so, and Yorkie and I discussed this the other day about his, his time on the power play. He averages over four minutes a game. But with Josh Norris in the lineup, which was the first five games of this year, and we talked about where everybody was going to play, uh, he was a second power play guy. Norris was first. So in the first five games, he averaged two and a half minutes on the power play and one assist because he was the sixth most used forward or sixth most used player on the power play. What happens when Josh Norris comes back? Is Alex Dabrinkit going to find himself outside looking in once again on the power play? Uh, Yorkie, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, well, it's int- great question. And it's going to be for DJ. I don't think it's going to be a tough decision because I think Dabrinkit, obviously you got your McDavid's and those guys, but he's one of the best power play guys from what I've seen so far in the National Hockey League right now. This guy thrives in situations where there's time and space on the ice. I'm not going to say he's a perimeter player, but he's great on three on three. He's great on the power play. He's great in shootouts. He just, he, his understanding of spatial awareness is it's elite. It is absolutely elite. So if you compare him to Josh right now of power play guys, I would say Dabrinkit's a better power play guy than Josh. Josh has a fantastic one-timer. Is there a way you could have both threats? Uh, potentially. Um, but that's what that's what we said from the start. You're, a 40-goal scorer is not going to score 40 goals or doing what he's doing right now if you have a 1A and a 1B power play. There's no sense having a guy and paying him $9 million if he's not going to pay the majority of your power play. So I'm, I have no idea. Well, I do know what DJ. Bobby said it two weeks ago. Josh will probably come back get get his reps in get back in shape start on the second unit uh and then we'll see what happens maybe another injury maybe something yeah. happens but Debrinket's not coming off the first unit there's there's no, no. chance yeah um, no there's no zero chance. there's zero, zero. Ch- no yeah. yeah so bob you're you would know because you play those flanks but uh i i yeah. i think Debrinket's that good i i I don't disagree with a, a single thing you just said. I think he's he's absolutely elite on that half wall. Um, I, I no, I, I'm not going to say the power play runs through him because I think all five guys on the unit right now are just they're in sync. But he calms a lot of things down over on that wall, um, and he's and he's and he's very very good at. I always looked at when you look at the box and one, right. Or the, you know, the one through one that they're kind of running. And then you, the way that the guy on the half wall would threaten to move higher or lower against that guy. That's, you know, right in front of you. And he does that about as well as anybody, you know, you know, Danny Briere was another one. He would always attack that guy um, to make that first play. So I, I see a lot of that in there and yeah, he's not coming off the end. There's just no way. Yeah, no, he's not, he's not Wally. And he, he reminds me, I played with Phil Kessel in, in, in Boston. And when Phil was having those great years, he was scoring 35, 40. He, he didn't have the one-timer. Phil was a wrist shot guy because he Kessel used that. Remember his stick, Bobby? It was like a, he used an intermediate yeah. 65, 65 flex. So, so we, used, we used to pass him uh, passes in practice because his one-timer, his slapper one-timer was not very good. It was just that ri- wrister he had. It was her. It's horrendous. But Dabrinkit's got a great one timer, um, and it's 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 uncanny too because when you give him the puck, he's just able to always distribute it right on the tape to somebody and put that next player yeah. in a in a prime position to give them time and space. But uh, it's 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 going to be interesting, man. Because I know we're going to get into this later this week, Wally. He's he keeps putting up points. The price isn't going to come down for him, and it's going to be yeah. really interesting to see what the Senators do with him because a lot of teams in the NHL right now, I could see them wanting a guy like Dabrinkit and building their team around him because a lot of teams don't have a guy like that uh, where Ottawa's got an embarrassment of riches of young guys with talent. Um, so yeah. it's uh, it's going to be interesting, but it's a hot button right now. If, if you say that Dabrinkit should be traded, man, Sens fans are coming for you with pitchforks. They want to chase you out of town, but we'll see. Like it's, They're going to have to make some really interesting financial decisions if they're going to try and fit him into the lineup. And someone, I'm with yeah. you, Bobby. Someone's going to, someone with a big contract will have to leave town. 100%. 100%. Jason York says, give Alex Dabrinkit all the money he wants. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not on. saying Ottawa will. He's 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 gonna get his he's gonna get his money. 
He's going to get his money. Someone's paying him. That good. Yeah. Someone's paying him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll, okay. We'll save it for another day. God, we've got a lot of topics to get through. Uh, finally, <laughs> to the lock of the day, uh, Yorkie's favorite part of the show, brought to you by lock it up. Botano. Go to botano.ca. Sign up today uh, for their sports book and casino. Uh, the game starts now at Botano. Also get a 100% welcome bonus up to $500. Okay, here we go. So I picked one game for us to, to bet on, and that's – uh, in uh, in an hour is puck drop on the outdoor game between Boston and Pittsburgh. It seems like they're the only two teams that ever play in outdoor games with Chicago. Uh, Boston playing their fifth outdoor game. Penguins tied for Chicago for the most. They're playing their sixth. Boston is they've since November 25th they've lost like yeah. one game in regulation out of their last 16 games. I think it is. Um, obviously the favorites. I'm going to start with Bobby. Uh, you're going to take your U.S. money. Uh, your one dollar and place it on someone to win. Who are you going to pick to win this game? The U.S. is going to beat Germany in the World Juniors. <laughs> that's, <it. laughs> that's my lock. That's my lock. lock. Uh, yeah. Um, if I got one. If I got one dollar to spend, I'm taking the home team. I'm taking the home team, and I'm taking Boston at, um, in the game. That's it. But yeah, I, I I told you guys how much I hate these outdoor games. They're hard to bet because you just don't know. You know nothing, right? So. I'm going to, I'm going to, for the first lock of the day, I'm going to veer towards Yorkie here and see what he has to say about it. <laughs> Boss, well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Crosby can't be happy. He's been knocked out, almost lost his career playing in an outdoor game. There's you're playing in the elements. It's all we remember that it was just a, because it's so the elements it's different. Um, what's the over under six, six plus on that one? Wally? I think it's six plus yeah. six and a half, six and a it's half. Too high. Oh. It's high because ice conditions, guys aren't shooting at the same. Uh, Boston's pretty stingy. Yeah. I would probably, I would probably go with the under in that one if I'm going to take a yeah, lock. I agree. Uh, I'm gonna, I, yeah. I'm a little more, I'm a little more comfortable if I'm gonna lock it in. I'm gonna say take the under on that one. Um, yeah. If, if you yeah. want to bet your dollar bill to to win the, this has like a three-two, three-one game. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and if I'm going to take a winner, um, probably Boston at Fenway in the little nostalgia there. So if you want to parlay it, maybe go Bruins, throw in the under, win yourself a little uh, cash there. So this is my question for you hey, guys. Hey, the lock of the day. Yep. This is – Boston has not – I saw this stat. Boston has not lost a home game this year, right? Yeah, yeah. in regulation. In regulation. Okay. Or is but it does this, lost or does is it just, it, I think it's just a regulation. I don't think they've, yeah, I don't know if they, I, I can't remember what it was, okay. but it, 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 whatever it is, it's ridiculous. But does this, if they lose tonight, does this ruin that? Is this technically a home game? Which well, I think is. Yes, it does. Yeah, it is. yeah I don't like but that. Then again, yeah, the I don't like that. Would, yeah. They'd probably put an asterisk beside it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, but I like, I'm, I'm, I'm with Yorkie. I like those locks. That's, that's a good lock. I think it's an under game. Boston is 18 0 yeah. 3 watch, at home watch this season. Score 10. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> there you have Five it. Five goal first period. The lock of the day. We're going to keep yeah. track of this. Is uh, Everybody <laughs> says take Pittsburgh and take the under uh, at six and a half. All right. Uh, and finally, because it's New Year's, uh, listen, I was, I waited up quickly until midnight and then went to bed. Uh, Bobby, what did you do, New Year's? I had a, I had both kids. Um, we had a little pizza party. We did the Martinelli's apple juice and uh, cider thing, which was a lot of fun. And then I had both kids in my bed because the kids' beds aren't set up yet. So it was a, it was an absolute. <laughs> it was a tough one. Um, any parent knows that you get in mummy style, and I'm like, can we go church pew, not toboggan? <laughs> it was tough. Um, <laughs> somebody, so somebody FaceTimed me. It was it was 12:20, and somebody FaceTimed me, but my iPad was across the room, and that's what it came in on, not my phone. So I got in. It was loud. I got up and um, ran across the room, stubbed my toe, and then laid on the floor trying to shut an iPad off to not wake the kids up at 12:20. And I was sitting there and I was, I was like, 2024 is going to be my year. <laughs> this is a tough start. 2024 is going to be my year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Nonetheless, I did have a great night. The, the kids and I had a great night. It was fun. It was, and then, you know, got some sleep and uh, woke up and enjoyed our New Year's morning together. 
Nice, nice. That's good. Well, mine was totally different. We uh, we started off <laughs> <laughs> heading over to my one friend's house, uh, moved into his new place, had a little tour, had some vino, and then we went to a karaoke party. Friends of ours love renting a karaoke machine, and then uh, the singing started at about 11. A lot of bad singing, a lot of people that think they can sing that shouldn't be singing. And then the highlight of the night was that automatic old-fashioned machine. We got that going early, uh, and there it is. You can oh, see yeah. I actually have the video of it. You got oh, your it's a it's Yorkie vid. Yeah, it's a uh, artesian. Oh, it's got yeah, pause we'll and every like you weren't lying. It's like a Keurig, but it, there you go. See, there's your old fax fashion mix, and you put that in the top. You have your different. Uh, alcohols on the side we like to use the uh the bourbon for our old fashions and the key to a good old-fashioned gentleman you gotta have the jumbo sized ice cubes you need a cherry um well my, my buddy though uh, jay bruce he is an old-fashioned expert and you gotta have a good glass as well you can't have a low-grade shitty glass gotta be a good glass nope. um the glass and, is and important there it goes. Glass is important, guys, if you're having a, a, a good cocktail. Yep. But that's all it was. Pre press the button. And uh, presto. I think he got it at, uh, wow. I don't know, his wife got his wife got it from, from him somewhere, maybe Costco or something. But uh, delicious. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, the best karaoke singer of the night had way, way too many of them. Uh, and the singing just got worse <laughs> and worse. So, yeah, there you go. Uh so, Bobby, it's tough that you've uh, already given up on 2023, 20 minutes into 2023, but <laughs> that's okay. I get it. Uh, yeah. If you had to pick one teammate to sing karaoke in a bar with to win uh, $100, who would you pick? Zach Smith, no questions asked. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> there's, there's not many. I, I don't even know if he's good. I just know we'd have a ton of fun. Um, <laughs> like, there's not... There's really not many questions you can ask me where the answer may not be Zach Smith. Who do you want to take to the deserted island? Zach Smith. Like, he's your guy for a lot of different things. <laughs> uh, but, I, yeah, and I, I don't know what – I was going to ask you, Yorkie, what your what your go-to song was. Oh, man. So, it was – so, my, all my golf buddies are there, and whenever we're late in the match and my team's winning – I get the I get my little uh, we always have the little Sono speaker and I play to the other guys on the 16th tee because we're usually up to I play Kate Bush <laughs> don't don't give up I don't know if you guys are Peter Gabriel <laughs> Kate Bush <laughs> so the, the four of us got up and uh, we did a little Kate Bush not a great song to do karaoke but uh, a little meaning but I'll tell you Wally you, you you'll attest to this we had this guy on the show Wally or, uh, Bobby Andre Wa on the karaoke unbelievable unbelievable and a good singer really too. and an entertainer yeah. uh, usually gets naked right. by the time it's yeah. over too oh, oh he's gearing down while he's singing oh he's naked guy yeah i, I, uh, <laughs> oh. I all right we're gonna have to okay. we're gonna have to do a whole show on just talking about rookie parties <laughs> <laughs> yes hey yes bobby why why still to this day the best rookie party I've ever had was at the Anaheim White House. Our good friend Bruno. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah. We're, oh, you know what? Yeah, I've I've heard this story about you. I didn't realize you were on the Sens when that was. He he was like I I've, I've never seen anything like it. So I I don't think much of that night is going to end up on our podcast. What? But I'd like to hear some of it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, well, we could tell I'm some of the stories right now. This was the oh, uh, this was the sen it, w it was the Senators rookie party back when Hosa was a rookie. Uh, I think Arvidsson was a rookie that year. And there's a restaurant in California called the Anaheim White House. And Bruno Serrato is the owner. And this is the one connection Bobby and I have. Bobby's one of Bobby's best friends, one of my best friends. And we were so far removed from our time in Anaheim, but we both have this connection. But unbelievable restaurant, one of the most generous guys in the world. But for one night. We turned that restaurant into a nightclub. It was fantastic. <laughs> like, and maybe maybe a record for most expensive rookie meal of all time. Um, I, it yeah, was, I've uh, heard of that one. It, yeah. it, got, it got ugly. It got ugly. But a great, a great time and uh, some great stories. Cool. Okay. Be, uh, we're going to get back to this because now I'm going to wait till we're hopefully in the middle of this week. Um, how much was the bill? Yorkie. Oh God. 
Got it. I think it was. I think it was close to 30, 35, and this is a long time ago. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm gonna do the yeah. conversion. I'm gonna. So that's around two thousand and one, right? That would be. Yeah, Hosa would have been two thousand and one ish. I'm gonna do the. Uh, I'm gonna do the inflation and see what that comes out to. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm not proud. Uh, I'm not proud. Of we're back here live tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't get through the whole sheet, so we'll. Uh, I got more topics already to go for tomorrow. So uh, we'll be back. We'll have lots to talk about. Uh, we'll see you at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Uh, thanks for watching Coming In Hot for Mon Monday. Happy New Year, everybody. Take care. See you, gentlemen. See you, boys. See you, guys.